folks, so um, I'm going to make a video about how I like to terminate Cat5 and Cat6 cables for networking. Now, I know there are a lot of other videos out there, um, so I want to try and get straight to the point because what frustrates me with most of the other videos is they talk about the tools. All right, I don't have anything to sell you. I just have been doing networking for um, probably 30 years, and I've terminated a lot of cables. I've and uh, I've terminated coax, 10 base T, cat 3, cat 5, cat 6. Um, and so I want to show you what works for me, what I do. Now I have carpal tunnel, so um, it hurts my hands to do this and it's difficult and I'm 40, I'm almost 45, so my eyes aren't what they used to be when I was young. So, so let's start. You need a bright flashlight, okay? The bright flashlight is to see the colors of the wires if you get into a dark space like this. Okay, You need a good quality crimper like this, but no matter whose tool you use, these don't work worth a shit. So you need an old school crimper to finish the job because I very frequently have one or two pins that don't get crimped properly. I chase them with this. You need a good pair of snips. Now, you can get these on AliExpress. These are Play-Doh Model 170. They're about $1.99 with free shipping, or you can buy them on Amazon for $12. I recommend Patience and AliExpress. You need a good wire stripper, okay? So this is the Platinum Tools uh, Cyclops. What makes this special is that when you put this in, it uses a rubber band to apply pressure. And so as you spin this around, it scores the jacket. It doesn't cut the whole jacket, it just scores the jacket. And so then what happens is you pull this out and you twist and break the jacket. And this is how you strip the outer insulation off without damaging the wires. So good quality cable will have a pull string. You need to snip this with these. See if you can see what I'm doing here. Got some focus issues, camera's following me. And then what I recommend is you peel these back. My fingers are not cooperating as usual. Just push those out of the way, okay? Now, some people are gonna tell you, you need to get all the way down in there, nonsense. You just need to get as much of this off as you can. And so the best way to do that is to hold this, just put this down in here like this, and then just, you see how I'm, I'm holding it with my other fingers and just clip, and off it comes and you need a trash can. Okay, because th this produces lots and lots of little chunk. And you need a pair of, a good pair of cutters because sometimes you've got a terminate the cable or you got to start over and while you can do it with the diagonal cutters it's just a pain in the butt so this works better just you know a couple clips I've got a nice clean cut and I don't have to sit there and chew through it like this this is hard it's hard to get the cable in here I've got just as good a chance of stabbing myself on that time it did well um, so those are all the tools and last but not least you need a cable tester if you're not using at least a basic cable tester, you have no idea what you're doing. So what this does, it has some resistors and it has a nine volt battery and it will send a signal through here and figure out if all the wires are connected in parallel like they're supposed to be. And then it helps to have a phone or printout. And what I use um, on, what I do with my phone is I have saved, oh, and you, you can't really see, and there we go. So I have taken a picture of the 568B diagram. There's two styles, 568A and 568B. Um, 568A came out first, 568B came out second. They really do the same thing. All that matters is that on each cable, you use the same style at both ends. So it doesn't matter if you have 568A at the patch panel to the wall jack and then you use 568B from the wall jack to the computer. It will still work. Um, and uh, well actually you know I take that back that may not work but um, I'd have to look at them side by side to tell you if that works but all that matters is that you 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 pick one and stick with it. I use 568B because 
And then I recommend having a labeler like the um, Bradley labeler that I have so you can generate nice little labels that tell you what the heck each wire is for because in six months when you come back and you're like, uh, which wire was that? So I am putting in security cameras today. So here is my wire. Eh, you know what? I think I want to end it right about there. I'm just picking what works good for me. And then I'm going to sit here and go through and do this. And now they say two inches. I pull it back several inches and I'll show you why here in just a second. Wire is cheap and um, you can always get rid of it. And again, I'm just clearing the wires out of my way so I can get to this insulator that's in the center. The important thing here is not to nick the cable. And I'm using Platinum Tools Easy Jacks. Um, it doesn't really matter whose of these you use. I just like their stuff. Um, if you want to use the other ones, you can. There are different ways to do this. Um, my hands don't work that well, so what I've done is this. Now, I wind up with a lot of extra wire here, but I'll show you why that matters. You need to take this between your thumb and your forefinger and pull it and then go in one direction, a second direction, a third direction, and a fourth direction, and that's how you get the wire straight. And then push it out of your way and move on to the next one. One, two, three, four. Now, you may not have to use all four times. Some of the uh, thinner wire is, is pretty good. This is uh, where it, it's labeled. This is Cable Matters Cat 6. <laughs> hard to read upside down. Cat 6A. Yeah, it's, this is thicker cable than normal and it's solid, which makes it particularly unpleasant to work with. Um, but this is what is good for long runs. POE and um, in the wall, and I have a box of it. I've since started using, I think, 26 gauge, um, which is a thinner. I think this is 24 gauge, which is really pushing what these, or maybe 23. It's really pushing what um, you can do uh, with these jacks. Um, but when I wired the house, I wanted to wire it for something that, that would work well and last. All right, so now I've got these ready. Now what I need to do is I need to start putting them in order. So I can look at my diagram and it is white, orange, orange, white, green. And I'm just kind of lining them up followed by solid blue. And one of the ways you can remember it is it's white, solid, white, solid, white, solid all the way across. So it's blue, white, green, white, brown, I just flub there and brown. Okay, so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to pull these, and what I'm trying to do is train the wires to sit where I want them and get them as straight as possible. So you can see here I've got pretty darn straight. So I'll hold this up. You can see it's pretty darn straight. Okay, and the straighter you make these, the easier this gets. Now I'm going to come out here and I'm not going to try and fix all this crap. I'm just going to cut it off and drop it in the trash can. Now I've tried this different ways. Um, each style of jack works differently. Now I've got to rest this hand. But what works best for me with these is an even cut. And now what I'm going to do is I'm going to put this in here and I'm going to just tilt it a little bit against the wires and slide. And because these are thick and straight, I can get them all the way to the back here without a problem. Now 
Now with stranded, these are difficult. So these, this is again, this is really pushing what I can get away with here. So, and I've, I've jammed one. So what's happened is one of them didn't engage and it twisted all up. So I'm not going to push it any further. I'm just going to stop and back up and fix the wire. And so the way I'll do that is I'll just kind of open the pack, move the blue back in, and it's the, the white and blue that's the offending wire. I'll straighten it out again, lay it back in, bring in my green, my white and brown, followed by my white, start retraining my wires. And I think this is good enough. Now I'm holding these a little far, so maybe I need to come in. So I'm holding it with the base of my hand and then the pinky and my forefinger. And what I'm going to do is I'm going to start this. And I, I got to get them to all slide in here. That's what's giving me grief right now. Okay, and then I'm pushing against this at an angle and that drives them all the way to the back and then they slide right through. So at this point, now what I want to do is I want to check the pattern. White, orange, orange, green, white, blue, blue, white, green, and I'm going to actually peel them because I want to make sure they're in the right order. Brown, white, green, blue, white. And this is the benefit of pass-through jacks, is you can sequence the things. These things have evolved over the years. So now what I'm going to do is I'm going to push this back as far as I can. And, if I, and I'm going to look. And if I've got something that has bundled up in there, like let's say that the brown is, is kind of crimped in there, I'm just going to pull. You want to get these as short as possible because the untwisted length is what degrades the signal. So you want to just push this all the way in, and then if any of them have slack in there, you want to pull it out because that slack is going to mess up your, your throughput. And this is how you build cables that certify. All right, so now the next part is you want to trim off all but about a third of an inch, quarter of an inch of that. And be careful not to pull because if you were to pull this off, you would screw it all up and you'd have to start over again and then you'd be really frustrated and you'd say a bunch of cuss words. So, now we're going to do the first crimp. And this has a little blade and so it'll finish trimming these and if you cut it too close, it doesn't always get them and it can be messy. So I, I crimp it two or three times. And sure, and, and, and this is a, um, I had a Platinum Tools, but it didn't work right, so I threw it away. This is an Easy RJ Pro HD by Sol Sartek, and guess what? It's a piece of shit, too. Um, but don't drop it, because it'll break tiles. It's a heavy tool. I mean, it's, it's nice. So it missed the third, and third pin's partial, and the fourth pin is not. And if I was to test this right now, it'll fit in a jack, but it won't make contact, so the, the line would fail. And so the fix for this is to just put this in this old school crimper and just visually watch it. And, and if it doesn't go down, just move over and hit it again. All right, and that line should certify. Now I need to pull the catch back out because the old school one locks it. But now I can visually see they're still higher than I think they should be, but I think it'll be okay. So let's find out. So there you go. So what this does is it tells me all lines have a connection, they're connected, and oh, my battery's getting low, but I don't have an error. So if I had a a short in the wire, this would light up, and if they were non-parallel or if there was something missing, they would, um, these other lights. So as long as I get connected and all lights, this line's good to go, and I can plug it in and run a camera on it. So um, that's all there is to it. Um, there's another little piece of this that's a resistor pack, and um, the 9-volt batteries last 
two-thirds forever. So um, I hope you've enjoyed my video. If you have questions, post. I'll try to help, but um, the, really the best way to learn this is trial and error. And, um, you know, uh, I will shoot some other videos of how I mount um, the, the inexpensive solution for mounting cameras and I'll go through some of the settings because those are other areas that just nobody else has consolidated it into one spot. So thanks for watching. I hope you enjoyed my video and you have a great day.